I hope people can stay for just a few more minutes to hear from one of our own, Margaret O'Dwyer. Good morning, all. My name is Margaret O'Dwyer, and I've represented the Company of the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul at the UN for a little over five years. I join with all the religious at the UN in offering you a hearty welcome. Do you perhaps feel like you've come into a, a labyrinth? Do you feel like you're trying to figure out the best way to navigate through UN systems? You may have lots of questions because you haven't even set foot yet in the UN building in Turtle Bay. You know what? You're going to do great. I urge you to ask questions of any of our RUN members. If you have a question, pick up the phone, shoot us a text or an email. We're there for you. We've got your back. I was asked to speak to you today about why faith-based organizations, or FBOs, should advocate at the United Nations. Why should we be present there? The first reason is obvious. Aren't we as members of FBOs to be bearers of good news? That's our primary reason for being at the UN. I love the saying of Prime Minister Erna Solberg of Norway. She said that essentially by joining together, we can turn hope into reality. That's our purpose, turning hope into reality for people who experience poverty, injustice, and inequalities. That's good news. Second, we bring the unique perspectives of our organizations to the UN. The world is perhaps like a prism of problems. And each of our organization focuses on a facet of the prism, prism in terms of how we approach problem solving. One might shine a light on ending poverty. Another focuses on improving global education. Still another tries to stop violence against women and another might wish to eliminate racism. Here's your chance to dovetail, to dovetail your organization's vision and goals with advocacy at the UN about issues that are closest to your heart and those of your community. Next, we're driven by Catholic social teaching. You know it emphasizes the common good, a preferential option for persons experiencing poverty and the dignity of each person. In order to protect the dignity of each person, we need to protect their human rights. So advocating for human rights as well as for sustainable development at the UN, are key opportunities we encounter in our work. Now let's look at relationships. As Pope Francis tells us, we can't simply be coldly indifferent to world's concerns. He calls us to a culture of encounter, which enables us to be part of the world's transformation. That's all about relationships. I believe Anais Nin said that with each new relationship, a new world is born. So through our relationship building at the UN, we're birthing a new world. In our ministry, we encounter staff of UN agencies, other NGOs, sometimes ambassadors, and most importantly, we connect with people who experience vulnerability. We come to know common concerns and we can put our heads and our talents together to be shape shifters of the future. Another reason to be at the UN is to give voice to people who actually experience poverty, inequalities, and injustice. They know the realities, and they're often the most persuasive people who speak at the UN. Now, relationship implies collaboration, and the UN is collaboration on steroids. One might make a flyer for an event, and another attend a webinar and share information with you for a newsletter. One might know a member state and help you find a speaker. The more voices we harmonize, the more wow we add to our advocacy. Collaboratively, for example, NGOs made sure that the right to water got into the sustainable development goals. So collectively, we can make a difference. 
Now, with some countries resorting to a real self-absorption and a certain protectionism, on one level, it seems to me that FPOs can also be a symbol of working together or multilateralism in UN language. So that sustainable development and human rights protection are not just something for those who are controlling, but for all. Relationship building can sound long and intensive, but no road is long when you have good company. And I think you'll find at the UN, whether it's UN agencies or other NGOs, everybody wants to build a better, more inclusive world. So know you are in good company. FBO should be at the UN also because we're first responders. We know what's really going on on the ground. We witness the gaps in services, so we can bring such suffering and inequalities as urgent concerns to the UN. And we also go where diplomats are not present. We work in the back of beyond, many of us, and the UN is committed to addressing the needs of people who are the furthest behind first. So we can enlighten agencies or diplomats about needs or realities in remote places. For example, the impact of climate change upon a small island state. Our work though is not just about clamoring for the attention of UN agencies or ambassadors. It's a little bit like the Grand Central to Times Square shuttle. It goes both ways. We not only enlighten the UN with grassroots views, but we also provide information from the UN to our constituents, such as good practices, creative ideas, and solutions to serious problems. It's a synergy. At many events, you're going to hear about good practices, so you'll have an opportunity to share them. Next, we seem to be in a season in which problems are complex. So here our organizations have a chance to offer ideas about successful solutions that you might see among your members of your organization that can make a difference. You know and I know that many feel the need for change at the UN, but it's still the largest entity addressing global concerns. It has worldwide reach. We're here because we have a chance to amplify voices at a global level to alleviate suffering. We can also join voices in recommending improvements at the UN. Civil society has spoken up loudly this year as the UN turned 75 about making it more fit for purpose. You can be part of the voices that challenge. Another reason to be here is to bring research to bear. The Congregation of the Mission and Unanima International, for example, worked on booklets which linked homelessness to the Sustainable Development Goals. Research at the UN helps influence data-driven decisions. At the UN, we also gain a broader worldview about so many issues, inequality, cultural differences, lived experiences, and more. We become less provincial and more global in our thinking, more creative and expansive in our solutions. We also have the privilege of learning from youth. They are so awesome. Uh, they're especially good at tech that makes our efforts so much more efficient. Things like tweet meets. They offer creative ideas about new ways to affect change and they move fast. Please know that making change through the UN is not synonymous with the Big Bang Theory. It's onion skin layer by onion skin layer of advocacy effort. You can do it and we're here to support you. The impact you make today has a ripple effect upon tomorrow. So bring your passion, persuasiveness, perseverance, and prayers. You will make a difference. We all want to build a better world. Working together, we can turn hope to reality. Welcome and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. That was wonderful. We'll have to let her know how well that went. Now, we do have some time for question and answer. I'll turn it over to Teresa Cotron to facilitate that. I know we've gone over time already, but I, for one, am willing to stay uh, on the Zoom call for as long as, as anyone has questions. 
Hi everyone, here is Teresa back with you. If you have any questions or any doubts, please feel free. Turn your, unmute your mic and ask, or you can write your questions in the chat. I know you have had an overload of information. It is too much to process. And if you want to, you know, ask any questions in the future, please feel free. Yes, Jane? Uh, not a question, but I just want to express my appreciation for including in this orientation uh, the message of, uh, shall I say, wisdom women at the run. I think they're, I feel that it's very encouraging. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, is it yes, Pat. Yes, um, I, I share Jane's gratitude for this session. And I have to say, I'm really happy that I'm doing it after a year of experience because it makes so much sense in filling the gaps of information, um, having kind of gone blindly, but with a lot of help and support this presentation was excellent, excellent. And I'm so happy that we will be able to um, access it again because it will be archived. So many, many thanks. Thanks, Pat. Yes, Alisa. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you all too for the presentation. I really enjoyed being here and learning a lot of new things that I didn't know about the UN. Um, and I'll have to head out because I have class right now, but I just wanted to thank you all for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Keep learning. And I just like to say, you know, if you want to be accompanied on any issues or how to navigate, feel free to contact anyone we will be more than willing and happy to help you process your experiences or help you navigate. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Bye, have a great day or a great night. <laughs> Bye. Jim? You have to unmute. Oh. No, I was, I was just waving, Teresa. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. You will have access to our emails, so feel free to contact us, um, you know, with any questions. If we can't, we will direct you to someone who knows about the answers. And at the UN, you are like you are perpetually at a university where you are taking new credits every month and new degrees. So there is new language, new processes, new information to learn and process. That's, That's right. my experience. I agree with you, Teresa. That's a beautiful metaphor. And I would just add one bit of wisdom that I received from my predecessor, uh, Sally Dunn, which was follow the energy because it shifts and it changes. Certainly every new year, every new general assembly, but sometimes, you know, even semesterly or even monthly. And so it's an important thing to... Um, be able to follow the energy as well. And as we close out, I wanted to ask one of our elders, Daniel, do you have any last words of wisdom for us on this endeavor? I, I just uh, want to thank all those who presented. I think you did a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, I would say that participating, getting to know each other. Right now it's a little bit difficult, but to the point that it is possible, getting to know representatives from the countries. Once you know them, and once they know you more specifically, 
it is so much easier to get to talk with them about different issues and even to ask them about specific things happening in their countries. They are usually very willing to speak with us from most countries if they know us. If we're just somebody they've never seen or heard of before, it's more complicated. So keep that in mind for the future. Hopefully we'll get back to seeing people in person before too, too long. And thank you everyone this morning for your time. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much, bye. Bye-bye. Bye everybody.